Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Hey, Evan. Hey, Jamie. And hey, everyone. Welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most influential men and women of today's leading telco and data center world, supporting the network infrastructure requirements of our modern world. Speaking of brave new world, Jamie, um, I think we're traveling again, if, yeah. if I understand uh, correctly. Uh, do you have any events coming up? I do. I do. I'm actually on a plane uh, on Sunday night, Mother's Day. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm taking off to go to ITW, International Telecoms Week, and that is happening uh, in Maryland near D.C., um, and uh, and I'm, I'm very excited. We're actually on Monday, May 9th. Um, launching um, the greater the greener data movement. Uh, so we have a, a roundtable and, and a cocktail reception um, at ITW that we're really proud to support and promote. So again, getting the industry to think greener is really part of our, our mission here at JSA. Um, and I know a, a lot of conversations having here on our Data Movers podcast, as well as, of course, uh, what we'll, we'll have today. Wow, that's super exciting. And I guess you'll have a maybe a book signing or what, what can we expect at the big party yeah. at ITW? Well, um, first, yes, there will be a, a table in the back where our authors are invited to sit down and sign any of the books that are being sold on site. Um, we have over 600 books coming, so please, please buy some so we don't have to lug them home. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but also um, we will be serving greener teenies, uh, apple martinis, so our signature drink as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I look forward to trying that. But if, speaking of uh, awesome stuff, we have a great guest today. I think. Yes, absolutely. So excited. Um, I have to say uh, uh, such a, a wonderful uh, person to introduce you guys to. If you don't know him already to our, our fabulous uh, industry, we are talking to Andrew Roof. He's the Director of Sales and Marketing for Genitza, North America. Hey, Andrew. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Hey, thank hey, you for having me on the JSA podcast here. I'm excited to be uh, talking with you guys and to everyone out there. So thank you. Oh, we are so honored. And you know what? Let's just start with a very easy one, a, a low-hanging fruit. Um, you, of course, worked with so many exciting companies across the tech fields in industry spanning, oh my gosh, electronic manufacturing, aerospace, semiconductor, IT, renewables, and the environment. So yeah. what makes you so excited to call Janitza your home? Well, I think that's that's it right there is uh, Janitza is a power monitoring company. So power is everywhere, especially in the tech world. And being able to work for the company that keeps me involved in multiple different industries, you know, like the semiconductor, like data centers, like renewables. Uh, I absolutely love all of it. So it's a, it's a different um, pitch to each different segments, the different uh, style of uh, how you're working with different companies uh, against the different market segments. And so it keeps it exciting and fun and uh, you get to work with a great company here uh, as well. So that's at the end of that show, it's mostly um, just being able to diversify across different industries, I think is a big appeal for me. Awesome. And I learned Janitza is a German-based company and uh, proudly has a Made in Germany label. Ich kann etwas Deutsch auf Deutsch miteinander reden oder auf English? No, I guess not. I guess we have to do it. I've, I've been picking up words too, uh, not as expensive <laughs> as that, but yeah, perfect. Okay. So maybe next time we'll do a German version. But um, how yeah. does that background, you know, and the Made in Germany label translate into the U.S. market? What's the story there? I understand that maybe even a family sort of run business. Um, and tell us about branching out in the U.S. Yeah, so it, it is a second generation family business that actually started back in the 60s. And uh, originally was a uh, power factor correction uh, manufacturer as well as switchboard manufacturer uh, and grew from there from the original uh, founder and owner. And then his son, uh, Marcus Janitza, 
took it over uh, kind of in the 80s and started focusing on uh, power monitoring uh, equipment, so essentially meters, and uh, has grown the business from there. And so uh, really, it's been a European, European-based uh, organization but has uh, essentially branched out quite a bit within the last uh, five to 10 years uh, to different uh, segments around the world. So uh, North America being one of those. And in fact, I'm uh, one of the, the first couple uh, employees for North America, our, our branch over here. And uh, it, it was really uh, the customers that we're working with were large global clients. And, and so it was a natural transition for the company to uh, migrate and start an office uh, here in North America and start running operations here in North America as well. And so since then, we've been growing uh, exponentially quite a bit uh, here in North America and uh, South America, Aust- you know, Australia, uh, Africa, Asia. It, it's been going, blowing up everywhere for us. Um, but yeah, again, uh, back to your question there. So the Made in Germany label is, is a fantastic one, especially it resonates really well for North America because when you think Made in Germany, you think of that, that high quality, uh, really well engineered products. So you think the BMWs, the, the Mercedes kind of cars and the, the well-designed and works for a long time kind of a, a product that comes from that label. And, and it really is, uh, it, you know, makes, makes sense with uh, Geniza brand as well. Yeah, for sure. Well designed. And you guys are really focusing on on what the marketplace needs, you know, um, energy management, of course, being Janitza's bread and butter. Yeah. And, and of course, on our end, data centers are being uh, our bread and butter here at Data Movers, our listeners. So could you tell us how Janitza helps data center clients better manage energy? Well, I think the number one thing that we provide is visibility. And what I mean by that is it's visibility of your power distribution in a facility. So for a data center, for example, you're using up quite a bit of uh, power and you need to have that power uh, constantly flowing to essentially your, your money making assets, which is those server racks that are out there in the data halls. And if power is not flowing out there, then that's not great for that, their business there. So having that visibility of the power distribution is what we provide uh, for data centers and in multiple ways. Um, one is just seeing the flow of uh, power going through the facility, that's, that's the easy one. But it, we really dial down a little bit deeper into the power quality side of things too. And uh, I, I won't try, I'll try getting, not getting too technical for you guys, but um, really the power quality makes a big impact on servers. They're very sensitive to the quality of power that's going through the facility. And if the the quality is not uh, where it should be, you're going to have damage. You're going to have some server issues or even heating up components that are unnecessary, uh, too much heat going to them that might fail. So uh, preventing failures, preventing downtime is really the goal of the products that we uh, sell to the data center markets there. And uh, it goes back to that, that visibility standpoint and the health of your power systems in your facility is what we provide. Very cool. Literally, very cool. Uh, so you you, uh, you help data centers cut back on energy usage, mm-hmm. but you also worked in renewable energy before Yaditsa. Yeah. So tell us, where is this world of greener energy, sustainability? Where are we headed over the next one or two years? It's, it's so important. It really is, especially for data center. They, they use so much power to run their facilities. And you really don't know, you know, where that power is coming from. Are you sourcing that power from a coal factory or uh, a natural gas power plant? Or you, you, you're sourcing that from a renewable source, such as a wind, solar, uh, or hydro uh, power station there. And so having that uh, understanding of sustainability and where you're purchasing that power is, is important for data centers because the amount of power you're producing is uh, you know, a factor of how much uh, pollution is out there from the, the power plants. And so there's a lot of good options that data centers have. Um, one of them is just working with the utilities uh, within your area to understand how many renewable resources they're purchasing in the, into their grid and supplying to you. Another option for them would be to just go out and, and purchase power directly from a renewable source and having a, a power purchase agreement created specifically for your facilities. And uh, there's quite a few renewable organizations building uh, wind and solar power plants, you know, every day. They're, they're, it's constantly getting 
uh, added to the grid, and there's a lot of good sources for purchasing green green power there uh, out there. So within the facility, though, there's also quite a bit more that you could um, you can push for sustainability in terms of what type of backup power that you you um, decide to use, whether it's a, a diesel or natural gas. But there's also I was reading about there's some uh, data centers that are experimenting with hydrogen uh, backup power as well, which would be fantastic to see in the future here. Love all those ideas, Andrew. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? And we were talking earlier about travel uh, events coming on uh, line again. Uh, we actually, we just saw Janitza recently at DCD Connect in New York. And yeah. you guys were there demoing the latest uh, updates to your network analysis software, GridViz 8.0. Yeah. So what were the attendees who saw your demo most impressed with? What was the response there? Yeah, specifically with the newest version, the 8.0 that you mentioned there, there's there's a lot more key features of adaptability towards, um, let's, let's use a data centers for example, uh, a lot more adaptability towards a data center operation. And what I mean by that is GridVis allows people to not just visually see the power in their facilities, but you can create your, your KPIs, you can create your specific dashboards customized towards your operation. And on top of that, we have customized alarms that you can create. We have uh, alerts, specific alerts to keep uh, your, your system, your operations flowing well. And then uh, one of the biggest features we added to 8.0 is uh, what we call the report editor. Every organization out there is going to have some custom report that they need to continue their, their operations flowing correctly. And so we've created this report editor so you can actually customize drag and drop different bar graphs, line graphs, different data points that you want to put on there, tables, whatever it might be, and create that custom report. And so I think that was the biggest eye-opener for clients when we were demoing the system is just how easily adaptable uh, that the system can be towards the, the operation of every different facility out there. Uh, on top of that, we actually have the ability to pull in multiple uh, facilities into one system. And so when, when the administrator is logging in, he only has to log into one system versus an individual site every time. Uh, and then we can pull all that information in and compare all the data points that are collected out of a facility into one system there too. Wow. Very cool. I know the uh, Hanover Messe in Germany is a, the biggest trade fair in Europe. Yeah. I'm sure you guys will be there. It's coming up in June. Yep. Um, it'll be fun to see what new stuff you're announcing as well. Uh, but let's switch gears. We have our rapid fire section where we try to embarrass you by asking you some fun questions. No, just kidding. We're not really okay. trying to embarrass you. But but tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Um, give us a fun fact that might surprise us. I, I hope this surprises you, but maybe not. I, you know, I've been in the technology field for a while, so it's kind of my natural uh, focus of life. And so um, here at here, uh, at my home, I really love adapting my home into a technology hub. And what I mean by that is all the cool tools that are out there for a smart home, uh, I've just been totally geeked out on <laughs> for a while. And so the, the smart uh, HVAC systems and thermostats and lighting systems that I've integrated uh, has been kind of a bit of a hobby, but also a fun uh, adventure for the family to do. I, I even have a, a smart ceiling fan. I can go onto my phone right now and actually, you know, change the settings on, turn on and off, all that kind of stuff. So that's uh, that's kind of been a, a bit of a hobby for me. Well, awesome. Um, yeah, I can understand that with your, your tech sensibility. Yeah. <laughs> the, the ceiling fan, that's a new one. So yep. I'll get into that one. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So if you could have lunch with a famous person in history, who would it be and why? I would probably pick uh, Leonardo da Vinci, um, if, if uh, of course, if we can speak the same language. Uh, but uh, really, it's it's that inventor's mentality of uh, going out there and creating new things, and just the ideas that he had over the years uh, has has been fantastic. And, you know, I was growing up learning about him, you know, in school and stuff. It was kind of an inspiration. I people actually go out and create amazing things out there, and he did it. So. That was a big inspiration for me growing up as well. But I would probably pick him out there uh, as someone I would love to meet. Great pick. 
Awesome. I agree. And if you were to give Leonardo your smartphone, you'd probably blow him away. What would he say? Oh, yeah, easily, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as the most used app on your smartphone, like on your home screen? Uh, the most used one? Uh, unfortunately, it would probably be uh, the generic stuff. So the emails, the the calendars, those kind of uh, things. Oh. Yeah, I'm in sales, so I, I'm constantly on, on those two things. But um, aside from work-related apps, it would probably be social media, uh, the Twitter. I like going through Twitter oh. a bit, mm -hmm. uh, the LinkedIn as well. I, I, I respect you already. This is yeah, fantastic. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a it's a high and low kind of fluctuation sometimes i'm really into it for a while then i'll get away from it but then i you know always find it you know going back to it, it's always fun to do and yeah then, me too. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm really into twitter and sometimes i'm really really into twitter so i fluctuate. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um all right come on let's dig just a little deeper here what is your hidden talent that you have surprise us Hidden talent. I mean, I don't know if I'd call it a talent or more just a hobby. Uh, if anything, I'm, I'm kind of a person that's a jack of all trades. So uh, there's quite a bit out there that I explore here and there. Um, you know, the family, I think, would be, uh, you know, a hobby of mine and uh, just kind of being a, a person that adapts well in, in many of different environments, I think would probably be the my biggest talent that I would have up there. So. Uh, any environment that I'm in, whether it's uh, a big trade show or on stage uh, giving a presentation or just hanging back with the family, it's, it's very adaptable in my personality here. So uh, I guess that would probably be my biggest talent is just the adaptability. Oh, I love that answer. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. That's That would make a great college essay. I'm going to give that to my son. There you He's go. going to be applying to colleges next year. So that's a Perfect. really oh, that's yeah. a good one. And if you were to write a book, uh, what would it be about? And you're not allowed to say uh, energy management for dummies. That's <laughs> already taken. But what other book would you write? I, I, there's two different topics that probably come to mind. Uh, one, I would like to do a book on the modern sales cycle, uh, salesperson, because uh, it's different. You're, you're not at behind a desk on the phone all the time with a, with a the Rolodex, you know, uh, just flipping through the phone. It, there's so many technology tools and the different way of your, that you're reaching out to people. I would probably do kind of a self-help type of sales, modern sales cycle type of book. Um, the other one would probably be a science fiction one. Um, maybe something around a uh, utopian empire kind of scenario or one where, you know, there, you know, imagine life if money wasn't ever invented kind of scenario, something completely uh, out there, uh, inventive right there. Oh, I love that. I love it. All right. Well, you didn't embarrass yourself at all. I'm very disappointed. Very <laughs> but, Next but thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see all of your upcoming releases and functionality. Yeah. It's, it's really so important what you're doing, particularly in this time of uh, high energy costs and uh, climate change. Uh, there couldn't be a more important topic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Janitza brings that transparency and flexibility that really our, our data centers really need right now to, to yeah. make a make a dent in that in that uh, carbon emissions reduction. So thank you for what you do. We so appreciate you. And hey, viewers, listeners, um, if you are enjoying today's Data Movers podcast as much as we did, go ahead and check us out, jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming Data Movers episodes. We release every other week on Wednesday mornings. Yeah, and be sure to follow us on here. Twitter. Yeah, thank you for having us. You'll see our tweets and we'll pick up the conversation there where Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell on Twitter and on Snapchat. Just kidding, we're not on Snapchat, but in any case. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, look forward to happy networking, right, Jamie? Yes, absolutely. Andrew, always a pleasure. Thank you, my friend. We want to have you back. We want to hear more. Definitely. And, um, and as always, um, think green, guys. Stay safe and happy networking.